Hi, so to my mind, um, chemistry really started with uh, two main things. One was the, the hunt for good colour, so dyes and inks and pens, that kind of thing. And the other was the search for soap, oddly enough. Uh, and these are two areas that I'm really fascinated in anyway. So I thought I'd do a demonstration on some of the absolute, absolute basics of how to make soap. Now, soap making was really known from about the 9th century by the Arabs, something like that. And there are recipe books going back to the 13th century, again in Arabic and recently translated into English. But soap wasn't actually used in Europe until something like the 18th century. Prior to that, you either you scrubbed yourself with sand or you just went dirty. And that's not really a problem when there aren't many of you, but when you cram a whole load of people into a room or a city, it becomes a real problem. So soap actually got really, really important. Now, there are only two basic components to any and every soap, and one is some oil. Now, any oil will do. This is sunflower oil. I, I was reading a, a website when they talked about using emu oil, and another one about horse oil. So any oil, really, will do the job. You can mix soap out of any oil. And the other ingredient you need is caustic soda, drain cleaner. And that's it. As long as you've got those two things, you can make soap. Now, the important thing you need to know is how much of this to add to this to make the soap. Because if you add too much of this, it'll just stay in the soap. And when you wash yourself, you'll actually be scrubbing yourself with drain cleaner. <laughs> Not a good idea. Now, you can experiment with it to find out how much. Because your end product soap shouldn't have a pH of more than 8. So if you get a pH paper and just touch your soap with it, if it goes over eight, you put too much caustic soda in. So on your next batch, and obviously make small batches, on your next batch reduce the amount of sodium hydroxide until you get a pH of your finished soap of less than eight. Now that's one way of doing it, and it's obviously a, a good experimental method. It takes quite a while, unfortunately, but there are an awful lot of things available on the web called soap calculators. If you just put in um, soap calculator or lie calculator into a Google search, it'll pull up a, a page full of these things where you can just click online and you type in the kind of oil that you're going to use, how much you're going to use, and it'll tell you how much of this stuff that you're going to be, uh, want to use. Now, if you use a lot of this stuff, it will turn all of the oil to soap. If you don't use enough of this stuff, it'll turn most of the oil into soap, but leave you a little bit of residual oil left behind. Now, sometimes you want that, because it makes a softer soap. So the lie calculator will give you a range of figures. It'll start at one figure for zero residual fat, and go down to about 10% residual fat, something like that. What you want is somewhere between 4 and 8% residual fat. That gives you a good pH concentration for a nice safe soap, It'll be a relatively hard soap. The more fat you leave, the softer the soap gets. And that's all there is to it. So bang your stuff in your lie calculator with your type of oil. It'll give you the amount of um, caustic soda you need. And then we're going to use a method called the cold method. Now, I don't really know why it's called the cold method, because it does involve heat. But it doesn't involve as much heat as the hot method. In the hot method, you put, and here I've got 100 grams of ordinary sunflower oil, you put your sunflower oil, heat it till it's almost bo um, boiling, and then chuck your caustic soda in that and stir it until it goes like porridge. Now, the other method, the cold method, uses water. And you put your caustic soda into your water first. Now, the amount of water that you use is also calculated for you by your light calculator. So, in this particular example, we're using sunflower oil, so we've got 100 grams of sunflower oil. I want a 4 to 8% fat content remaining, so we've got 38 grams of water, and we've got 12.95 grams of caustic soda. Now, the weight of caustic soda at these kind of ranges where using 100 grams of oil is quite difficult to get. You need a halfway decent um, weighing machine in order to weigh out um, points of a gram. If you don't have a halfway uh, decent weighing machine, if you're using a kitchen scale, it's too big a lot, so you use a kilogram and multiply it up. With this method, you do need a decent weighing scale. Decent weighing scales aren't that difficult to get hold of. This is a jeweler's weighing scale, and it weighs to uh, one hundredths 
of a gram. I bought it from eBay and it was something like £10 or so and that's good enough to weigh out small batches of caustic soda for soap making. So something like that will do the job really, really well. And that's all you're going to need. Now, what you do with it is heat up your oil until it's between 40 and 50 degrees centigrade. And I've preset this so that it'll heat up between 40 and 50 degrees centigrade. And as that oil heats up, what you do is add the caustic soda to the water. Now, don't chuck all of the caustic soda in at once because the addition of caustic soda to water is exothermic, so that will get hot. So you put in a little bit of it, give it a swirl around, and let it dissolve. Okay, so I'm clearly wearing gloves, and that's obviously because I'm working with caustic soda. And as I said before, you can use any oil at all, really, including recycled oil. So if you finish with your cooking oil, you finish actually cooking, you can filter it out so you get all the crispy bits out, and you can use your own cooking oil. Um, the 13th century manuscript that I described earlier uh, talked about using burnt sesame oil. So really, any oil will do, including recycled oils, to make soap. One of the slight problems with recycled oils is that they have a um, burnt cooking smell, obviously, because of where they're from. Uh, but one thing you can do about that is put additives in. So you could put your favourite fragrance in, you can put a herb extract in, or you can put fabric softener in. If you add uh, about five millilitres of fabric softener to this mix, then it'll take away that burnt cooking smell and actually make it feel a little softer. What I'm going to do is add a few drops of tea tree oil, mostly because I have tea tree oil. Okay, so we've warmed our oil, we've dissolved our, our caustic soda, and what we're going to do now is stir it. And you stir it for 15 minutes. Now, you don't have to use a stirrer and a hot plate like I'm using. You can just do it on the top of your oven. Uh, if you turn on your gas ring and stir it with a spoon, it's just stirring something for 15 minutes is a bit, of dull, a bit dull. And what you're looking for is something called tracing. Now, all tracing is, is where it thickens up, and it kind of thickens up like a custard. So you're waiting for it to thicken up like custard. So you stir it for 15 minutes, and if it's traced, you're finished. If it isn't, you leave it alone for 15 minutes and then stir it for 5 minutes. And you keep on doing that until you get that custard-like thickening, that tracing happening. Okay, so we've got the thing stirring, we've got it at about 45 degrees, and we just add our caustic soda solution to it. and leave that stirring for a minimum of 15 minutes. So here we are at the end of the first 15 minutes. At the end of the first 15 minutes, just stop stirring it. Obviously, I've got a stirrer, so I've turned the stirrer off, and the hot plate is still on, uh, but I've stopped stirring it. And I'm going to leave it for another 15 minutes, just warming through, and then at the end of that 15 minutes, stir it for another five minutes. Now, I need to do that because you can see that it isn't tracing. It's still quite liquid. It hasn't thickened up. Now, don't worry if it doesn't trace at the end of the first 15 minutes. It actually rarely does. You have to keep going at it until it thickens like custard. And when it's done that, it's ready. And you just keep doing it. 15 minutes rest, 5 minutes stirring, 15 minutes rest, 5 minutes stirring, until it traces. So one of the reasons we get dirty is that um, the muck around us gets mixed in with the oil that we produce naturally and that makes it stick to our skin. So in order to get rid of that, what we need is something that will dissolve in oil and in water. So if we can get something like that, then the dirt will get surrounded by the oil-loving bits and then you rinse under water and the water-loving bits will carry it away. So we have something that's a bit like this. We have a one end that loves water and a very long tail that loves oil. And this long tail wraps around the oil. So we get a little droplet of oil with our long tail wrapped around it. And our water-loving bit is the bit that carries it away. Now, our drop of oil mixed with dirt that's covering our skin actually gets surrounded by lots of them that look like that. 
So we have our water-loving bits pointing outwards. They're the hydrophil uh, hydrophilic, love water. The hydrophobic, hate water, point in. And this on the oil, we form this little droplet. This little droplet's called a micelle. Now, all soaps form micelles, and micelles are very, very, very small. So when you form a micelle, you can, you can then wash it off in water, and you form this micelle really by rubbing it. If you rub the soap onto your hands, it forms a micelle, you wash it under water, the water-loving bits carry it all away. And that's how a soap works. A soap works because it has a hydrophobic end, this oil end, and a hydrophilic end, this end here. Now you make this from oil. So any and every oil really is a long chain hydrocarbon. It's like a long tail of carbon. And so it loves other oils. It will dissolve in other oils. Now when you add the sodium hydroxide, you effectively knock a bit off the end and add it onto the end there to create something that loves water. So all soaps are made in that way and all soaps act in that way. You can use any oil at all, including recycled oil. So as I said before, if you finish with frying your chips and your chip pan oil is uh, dirty and burnt and finished with, you filter out the big old bits, chuck in some um, caustic soda there, and you can recycle that oil time and time again. You don't have to use oil, you can use fats. Any animal fat will do it, any vegetable oil will do it. So there's a whole ton of things that you can make soap from. Now, if you use old burnt oil, you're going to end up with soap that smells like old burnt oil. So what you do with it really is add some perfume, stick something in there that is going to cover up that smell. And what will work, actually really quite well, is fabric softener. Now if you use pure oils, so the um, olive oil for instance, or the sunflower oil that I used. Now I used sunflower oil because I went down to Asda and it was on the shelf and I just picked it off the shelf. I think I paid about 45 pence for a litre, something like that, I can't remember. But it was very, very cheap. I just picked it off the shelf, decided to use that. If you use um, purer oils, you get a better job. So imagine the kind of soap you would make if you used a virgin pressed olive oil. I mean, it'd be an expensive soap, but it would be a lovely soap. Then what you do is add some um, additives to it. For example, tea tree oil, which is what I'm going to add, and you're going to get a nice, smooth, soft, beautifully smelling, uh, almost medicinal soap out of that. Okay, so this has had an hour, so it's had four goes of 15 minutes, 5 minutes, 15 minutes, 5 minutes, and as you can see, it's changed colour. It's become this kind of thicker, custody-like white here, and it smells of sunflower oil, actually. Now it's at this stage that you can add your additives, and here's my tea tree oil, and you can add whatever you want, really. You don't need a lot of it, incidentally, on something like this, just add a couple of drops. And that has a really nice tea tree oil smell. Give it a little stir just to mix that up. And you're pretty much finished. All you need to do then is find yourself a mould. Any kind of mould will do. Uh, cake moulds, square moulds, uh, biscuit tins, uh, silicon moulds, anything that you do will hold that liquid in there and you pour the liquid into your mould. And then set it aside for two days to dry. And over a two day period that'll just dry out and what you'll get is this. This is a white hard soap. It's got a pH of about 8, which is where you want it to be. And if you cut that into the shape, so you make a bigger one and you cut it into the shapes that you want, you're going to have bars of soap. You need to leave it to cure for two weeks. And at the end of two weeks, it's ready to use. Now, that's all there is to soap making, uh, at least on the basic level. So I hope that was of interest for you, and thank you very much for watching.